Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining in. Let me acknowledge the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister, as well as the Honorable Rayburn Blackmore, the Minister for National Security and Legal Affairs, as well as other senior government officials who will address us this morning. As of 11 p.m. last night, a tropical storm warning was issued for Dominica as tropical storm Brett advances towards the island. So we will first hear from the Honorable Prime Minister, Roosevelt Skerritt, and I now invite him to address us. Morning, everybody. Uh, well, as we've announced from last night, the country is now under a tropical storm warning and um, we would have announced some um, preemptive and proactive um, actions in order to um, safeguard the country. Uh, we met yesterday afternoon um, from 5 p.m. to receive reports from the various um, heads of the, of the respective committees uh, under the National Emergency Planning Organization. Uh, we, believe, we believe from the government standpoint in, in respect to health and national security, um, the shelters, uh, we are in a, a pretty good place. Uh, obviously, um, no system is perfect and you, you have to keep at it um, as time passes by. Um, but I, am, I feel much more comfortable um, in terms of our preparation this year than last year. So, so there's, there's there's, there's some improvement in, in our planning. As we announced last night, there'll be there's no school today uh, and, and tomorrow. Um, and the um, CXC exams uh, will, will continue for a couple of days and we'll, we'll monitor the weather for Friday. Um, we are advising that um, workplaces are closed um, from 12 today to allow um, residents and citizens um, to make their way homes and to do their own final preparations. Now, all of these actions are, uh, are, are all get to um, to safety for safety, in you know, ensuring that people are safe, and um, and and so we need to ensure we take proactive and preemptive actions. Now, as we all know, in our country and in this region and this world, because of the advent of the impacts of climate change in our countries. Um, Tropical storms are something that we have to take very seriously. We should not wait for it to be elevated to a hurricane warning or hurricane watch for us to start acting up. Um, we have seen what not only tropical storms have caused to us in Dominica, but even troughs, you know, um, heavy rainfall um, have caused significant damage um, to properties in Dominica. And in respect to tropical storm, uh, we don't have to go back to a, a, a long history to, to appreciate the impact and, and therefore it's important, absolutely important that we all take um, from the community level, from the individual level, the necessary actions in, in, in preparation for, for this hurricane season. Um, from, the, from, from my personal standpoint as Prime Minister and of course from the government standpoint, we take these things very seriously. All of the systems have been activated and, um, and ensuring that the various entities have the resources to carry out the duties. Um, it is something we'll monitor, we'll keep you posted. As always, it's important for, for you to um, rely on the official source of information on this. I know we all have access to technology and all sorts of sites which provide us with, um, with information. And that's fine, we, we could do so. But in terms of our own national um, preparation, our own national response, it is absolutely important that um, we, we follow the advice come from the um, Office of Disaster Management and also um, from the Met Office. Um, and so I would like to urge, again, those of us in the communities uh, to go out and not only uh, pay attention to our own properties, but also to the neighbors. Um, there may be hazards in the communities, block drains with leaves, just simple leaves, drains being blocked with simple leaves can cause some damage to property. And, and so let us, let us be our neighbor's keeper, let us play our part. Um, 
even if the government systems are all in place um, and our systems at the local level, at the family level, at the business level are not in place, then we have some risk. Um, and, and therefore, we need to mitigate against this risk by us taking adv the advice that we've given. The issue of the, um, of the kits and, and the things that you need to have um, at your homes for that could last for 72 hours, of course, we'll provide this information again from the ODM this morning. Um, we, we have with us um, the ODM, we have with us the Met Office, uh, we have the, the shelter, um, the, the chairman of the shelter committee, and I want to certainly commend him for, for, his, for his efforts. Uh, these folks don't only sit in the offices and, and, and check shelters, they, they go physically and, 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 and check the shelters to, to ensure as far as possible that that this that that, that um, shelters are in order and so forth. We have the, um, the health ministry of health here, um, who've been very active in ensuring that not only the the Dominica China Friendship Hospital um, is in place, but also critically the the health centres and more so the health centres in in um, the most vulnerable parts of the country. Um, national security is 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 is, um, is fully on board to ensure that um, in the event of of um, search and rescue, likewise the, the fire service. Every one of the state agencies and systems are, are in order. Over the last several weeks and, and more so last several days, we've been clearing ravines and waterways, um, so removing siltation to, to ensure that um, we can mitigate against, against flooding. So um, let us not be anxious. Let us remain calm. Let us be level-headed. Um, we have we have gone through this drill many times, um, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, and therefore we just need to um, roll out our own individual plans um, and as a family in a business place and, and to secure properties properly and so forth. And let us, um, by by prayer and supplication, um, put our petition to the Lord that He spares us um, this this event because um, clearly um, we don't want any. And anyone to be impacted. There are, there are countries like St. Lucia and, um, that have been placed on under hurricane watch, and we, and we pray that they themselves will be spared, Martinique and others, and Barbados and St. Vincent under hurricane, um, sorry, tropical storm um, watch. Uh, and so we, we, we are all in this together. Um, why would we pray for ourselves? We need to pray for others as well. Um, I will, I will um, pass back on to the press secretary, but we have to provide information. And the intention is to is to provide you with information, possibly twice a day. So there'll be another group of of, um, of committee members who will come later today um, to share information to the public as to what we have done, what we're doing, and what very importantly, what is required of each of us, each of us um, in our own preparation. And I want to stress that the government will do all what it has to do, and we will do everything that we need to do. But if at the end of the day, we don't play our part at the family, at the community level, at the business level. We will, be, we will not be as secured as we should be. So please check your basic things. I'll, I'll leave the details to um, my friends who are here to present. Um, but uh, again, I want to commend um, the leadership of, of um, Minister Blackmore, who, who is the minister responsible for, for, for disaster management, and, and, and all of the stakeholders who have been playing their part. Um, it, it, it has been days and uh, nights of work. Um, uh, those of us who have the responsibility, um, if we do get a, a, some sleep, we leave one eye open, you know. So um, because of, you know, some anxiety can kick in. But we have to manage anxiety uh, as we provide leadership and guidance to the country um, in, in, this, um, in, in, this, um, in, in these times. We just, we, we, we're in June, and we're already being um, threatened by a, by a storm, and with the advent of climate change and the impact of climate change, the hurricane season no longer ends in September. You know, it, it, it goes all the way to, to December, um, because one cannot forget that, that we had this trough in 2013, uh, which affected um, the, the south uh, western parts of, of Dominica. So let us um, watch and pray, but we have to act. Um, prayer, prayer is important, but we have to do what we need to do uh, to prepare ourselves. And, and, and so we can do both, and we need to do both. But please, please, 
do not take this thing for 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 granted. Um, do not take this thing for granted. That is my my sincere plea to all of us in the country. Uh, let us do what we need to do to prepare ourselves um, for for this storm. While we while while we pray um, that it will that will be spared this storm. Thank you very much. No thanks to the Honourable Prime Minister, as, and as you heard from the Prime Minister, we have a number of officials here with us to give you a full picture of our preparatory efforts as a state, and we will begin with Mr. Itoma James, he's the Acting Senior Met Officer, and he'll provide an official update on Brett's truck, Mr. James. Good morning. Let me first start by acknowledging the presence of the Honourable Prime Minister and the Honourable Minister and also my esteemed colleagues. Good morning. At 8 a.m. this morning, the centre of Tropical Storm Brett was located about 13.6 degrees north and 57 degrees west. On this position, it makes Brett centre about 315 miles southeast of Dominica. Brett is moving towards the west near 15 miles per hour and is expected to continue on its path for the next several days as it enters the Caribbean Sea where when it gets there it should significantly weaken and deteriorate. The maximum sustained winds from yesterday has gone up so there is a slight increase in wind speeds to about 70 miles per hour which places makes Brett a strong tropical storm. The wind speeds extend outwards to 115 miles now and that makes as it passes 90 miles south of Dominica that puts us in the track where we are able to get tropical storm force winds. So we should expect tropical force storm winds and probably winds that can gust to hurricane force winds may be most likely in communities further to the south of the country. Um, an increase in showers and thunderstorm activities can be expected from this afternoon from about 2 p.m. and could further deteriorate or well, should further deteriorate as the day progresses and into overnight. These thunderstorms and showers can bring can be moderate to heavy at times and can possibly create widespread flooding or flash flooding. So persons in areas prone to flooding and landslides should take, take extra precaution. The, Total for the rainfalls are still within the same range of about 4 to 8 inches. On the east coast, we expect that there, to be a, there is to be a deterioration in sea conditions with swells expecting to raise up to about 4 meters or 12 feet as the storm, the storm approaches. So we urge that people take the necessary precautions. If you have not already done so, you can start moving your boats, putting them to safer places. If you have not move the debris and over, cut overhanging trees, do all the necessary preparations if you have not yet done so, as Brett can cause some damage and we should be prepared. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. James, for your very precise update. Uh, Mr. Fitzroy Pascal is the National Disaster Coordinator and he will now provide us with his update from the ODM perspective. Good morning to all. Um, thank you, Dion. Allow me to recognize the presence of the Honorable Prime Minister and also the Honorable Ribbon Blackmore, Minister for National Security and Legal Affairs, the other um, colleagues present, the media, the nation, good day. The NEPO, the National Emergency Planning Organization, has been activated. The NEPO is in a state of readiness, and now we are asking residents that um, preparedness activities should be finalized and their plans activated. By now, residents should have secured their homes and do some final checks and have material and tools on hand to secure windows and doors. Storage of water, it is very important. Um, secure your important documents. Um, put your grab and go bag, as I was told, close at hand to take with you if you are sheltering away from home. Find out where the shelter is located 
the shelter list has been widely circulated. Um, if you must use a, a shelter, sorry, obey shelter rules and observe the um, guidelines. Avoid or limit outdoor activities during the passage of the system as much as possible. Secure loose objects that could cause harm during strong winds. Boat operators, like I told said, should secure their um, vessels. Do not cross flooded roads or waterways. Remain alert during heavy rains. Be alert for floods and landslides. Do not go sightseeing. Be ready to assist the elderly and other persons in need of your assistance in your area once it is safe to do so. And um, keep updated on information from the ODM and the Med Service. And just to go over the grab and go kit or the bag, the food items, non perishable, ensure that you have um, drinking water, ensure that you have hygienic supplies, soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, feminine products, your essential medications, your first aid supplies, matches, can opener, kitchen knife, this basic stuff, your transistor radio, battery operated, that is, your torch and batteries, your lamp, your fuel. Um, bed in again, your reading glasses, uh, and copies of important documents. Be prepared. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Pascal. Mr. Glenroy Tuse is the shelter coordinator of the National Emergency Planning Organization, NEPO, and uh, the most common questions I've seen on social media relate to shelters. Mr. Tuse will now offer information and clarification as relates to our shelters. Mr. Tuse. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Let me recognize the Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister Blackmore, the Cabinet Secretary, my colleagues, the media, our listening and viewing folks in Dominica and abroad, a very pleasant morning. We all know one of the primary functions of disaster risk reduction or disaster management is that of saving lives and to a very less extent property. And so if we're talking of life saving, shelter management becomes very critical in that regard. And so the state has a responsibility to provide the requisite mechanism to ensure the safety and security of the citizenry. Hence, the state has provided to the general population 101 emergency shelters for the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. Of course, Mr. Pascal has indicated that we have had a widespread sharing of the shelter list. And as indicated, a number of concerns, in, my, in fact, um, people have been ringing me throughout the night. Concerns being expressed is that while we have identified the shelters, they may see some communities, and I will explain this morning, there are some communities where you will not see a designated shelter, but shelters have been assigned. And I will explain very clearly um, as it relates to those communities. I'll take it step by step so that we understand. For example, you may not see Campbell, Kenfield, Massac, Taru, Sultan Live Park on the list of emergency shelters. But the Jimmy Emergency Shelter has been assigned to those communities. I repeat, so Kenfield, Campbell, Maho, Jimit, Taru, Layupak Sultan will be assigned the Jimit Emergency Shelter. And, Ma and, Masak. and Masak, yeah. Masak, yeah. So those are the communities. So if you do not see those communities on the list, it does not mean that shelters are not assigned to them. Shelters have been assigned to those communities. And I will go east. I will go east because we all know of the vulnerability of the communities in the east. And I'm talking of communities like Casibros, Goodop, Tranter, Deepa, San Sauve, Petit Soufrie. And so for that area from Petit Soufrie back to Deepa, all of those individuals will go to the Casibros Regional Shelter. So if you do not see a shelter for those areas, Please be informed that those communities, I will repeat again, Petit Soufrie, San Sauve, Good Hope, Tranto, Deepa, Mopo, Cassibrus will go to the Cassibrus Regional Shelter. I'm coming to the west, further west. You may not see, for example, Kolihu, Kulibistri, Meru, 
let me just inform that Colio will go to the Jimmy, sorry, we we'll go to the Layu Regional Shelter. Sorry about that. So Colio will go to the Layu Regional Shelter. Kulibistri will go to the Monrachet Resource Center. Miro will go to the John Caleb Lura Primary School in St. Joseph. And um, yeah, so that is it in terms of further west. Um, we need to inform and to ensure that people understand because this is the anxiety that some persons are saying that they do not see the communities on the list and and that is the situation if we go further further north um born born we will we are sharing the bond so we will take some people born to the dodan primary school and also to the portsmouth secondary school that's for born i'm referring to communities where we do not have in the community designated shelters but shelters are assigned to those communities so i wanted to make it clear so that we understand maybe before i end i'll, I'll do a repeat again so that it is further um, emphasize. Tibo is at the Tibo Resource Center, so we have the others organized. I'm just referring to communities where we do not have on the list um, the names of the community in terms of um, shelters have been assigned, but um, persons are concerned that they're not seeing the community name on the list and that sort of thing. So I hope I've clarified that um, in terms of that. We have put all shelter managers on alert for the possible activation of the shelters. If needs be, they're already on the alert. Shelter teams are meeting. And the meeting is basically to ensure we prepare the place. So we don't wait the last minute to prepare the place um, so that persons can, can access the shelters as soon as they are activated. I really want to encourage our people in Dominica. I mean, Mr. Pascal did indicate that preparation should have already been made. You should have already had your go kit, as they call it. Um, but I really want to encourage the general population to be mindful that y as soon as the shelter is activated, we want people to go to the shelters. We have had in the past this late, you know, people come the 11th hour, which creates chaos, confusion, and that is not what we require. So we are asking as soon as we activate the shelters, we are hoping within 10, 15, 20 minutes, the people at the shelters. We know that we, may, we, we, we have to transport some people, particularly those and in the communities that we've mentioned that we have our shelters are assigned to them. Yes, we understand that. But clearly, we are really encouraging the general public, do not waste time. As soon as we activate the shelters, we're saying within 20 minutes to half an hour, people should have already been in the shelters. We're also saying as well, and of course it was mentioned both by the Honorable Prime Minister and Mr. Pascal, the need for persons to ensure that they too do what is necessary in terms of their own safety and security. So you're accessing the shelters, you've made that determination, you're going to come to the shelter. We often, I often use the word in local parlance, do not come with your hands swinging. So we expect people to come with their go kits, at least some water and food stuff for 72 hours, which is three days. You know, some bottles of water, canned food, dry food, and things of that nature. If you can, bring your little blanket. We're not encouraging people to, so we have so many mattresses being brought there. But um, the important thing that we have to understand is that the the first intent of sheltering is really to ride the storm. It's really to ride the storm. And following which an assessment will be made and persons can go back home and do an assessment. But it's really to ride the storm. And in so doing, we really want to encourage people um, at the shelters to be, be each other's brother, each other's keeper, um, to collaborate, to cooperate. It's important. We may have, we are going to have a number of senior citizens, and we know our senior citizens do not like so much noise. So we have to keep the decibel down, the noise, a little down, because what you do not want for yourself, we always say, do not want it for others. So it's important that we understand that um, in terms of, of, of our shelters. We, we are asking people to it, bring in their basic supplies. We'll be registering individuals, so people will register. And there's a clear reason for the registration. We want to be able, at the end of it, so that we can have a count. We can have some valuable data to inform us in terms of decision making as we move forward. So that is, in, that is very important. If you ask some questions, please answer it, because that is important so that we can identify the people that we have in our various shelters. While I say that, we are uh, ensuring that we provide just the basic basic supplies to the shelters and basic is non-food i must report non-food items so we the basic thing the courts the a few blankets and, and and first aid kits and things of that nature um to just allow for a, a welcoming and better 
um, shelter experience in that regard. And we are particularly concerned about our senior citizens because we know that we are, they are the most vulnerable persons who are physically challenged as well. And so we will be making that available to, to our shelters. But importantly, we again want to call on the general public because you have, we have got to ensure that we all have that responsibility. I, I, oftentimes I mention the, the four-tier approach to disaster management. There is the, the individual responsibility, there is the family responsibility, there is the community responsibility and the responsibility of the state. And if we, if we all collectively assign our responsibilities and do it effectively and efficiently, I'm pretty certain that we are going to have not only a welcoming shelter experience, but a shelter experience that is second to none. Um, not only in the region, but in the world. So certainly, we, we really want to, to call on the general public. And before I close, I want to again repeat, because some people may have just joined us, I want to again repeat that you may, see, in some communities, you may see, you may not see on the published list of shelters, the name of the community, and I want to repeat, and I'll go very slowly with that again. So for the communities of Canefield, Massac, Maho, Jimit, Campbell, Taru, and Laupak Sultan, these individuals are assigned the regional shelter in Jimit. For the communities in the east, Pitit Sufriye, Ksansove, Gudo, Mopo, Tranto, Deepa, and Cassibros, they are assigned to the regional shelter in Cassibros. For further west, Communities like Koliho, we are going to the regional shelter in Layo. Community of Kulbi Street to the Monroe Church Resource Center. And Miro, we will go to the John Caleb Lura Primary School. The community of Bonn, we are splitting Bonn, so some residents will go to the Doden Primary School, and the others were taken to the Portsmouth Secondary School. I, as much as possible of giving you that information, we know there is a lot of anxiety, um, but all we are saying, please, we are asking and we are encouraging the general public, once we have activated the shelters, we are asking people to go to those shelters as soon as possible. Do not wait until you see the gust of 65 miles per hour and the rain of four inches or eight inches, and then that's what the time you want to go to the shelters it may very well be too late. And there's a, often a saying that goes, too late shall be your cry. Let us not allow too late to be our cry. I want all of us, all of us, to work collectively as a people in ensuring the safety of the citizens of Dominica as we ride this tropical storm, Brett. Thank you very much. Well, thanks to Mr. Tuse for indeed this uh, very valuable information, which I'm sure will prove very useful to our population. Dr. Linara Favre Drago is the acting director of primary health care in the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Social Services, and she will now present. Good morning to all. Let me acknowledge your presence. Our Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, and Minister Blackmore, the other dignitaries from the Ministry of Health. The most important thing that you can do as a storm or hurricane approaches is to get yourself and your family prepared. We at the Ministry of Health have done our utmost to get our homes prepared. And by our homes, I mean our health centers. Over the past several months, we have been working tirelessly to ensure that our facilities are well prepared in the event of any disaster. Following the events of Tropical Storm Erica, Hurricane Maria, and even COVID-19, the Ministry of Health made the necessary adjustments to our disaster plan to mitigate the impacts of future disasters. As far as the infrastructure goes, every health center, especially our new health centers, have been built to specific resilient standards. Others, such as the Granby Health Center, the La Plaine Health Center, and the hospital in Portsmouth, have been refurbished and smarted to ensure that they can withstand the brunt of any storm or hurricane. 
In the event that access is restricted, all of our facilities have in stock medical supplies that may be needed in the event of injuries that occur during the storm and also have on hand routine medications for those diagnosed with our CNCDs and may not have adequate supply at home. The centers are equipped with generators uh, in the event of a power outage and our water tanks have been cleaned and refilled to supply our needs in case of a shutoff. Our medical staff are on high alert and over the past two months we have ensured that every health district has an additional district medical officer to be able to provide care to our clients. Of course, getting your home prepared looks a bit different for you. And by starting early, you will avoid the rush of getting your home supplies, your groceries and other things needed. A lot of times citizens are left scrambling to get things done and then anxiety kicks in because the Met Office or Itoma is on the radio saying that the storm is quickly approaching and it's getting worse. And so in preparing for any event, I always ask myself that simple one question, what if? So I'm asking us as citizens, what if? So what if Dawasco shuts off its water? You should be able to respond, I have three days supply of water, one gallon per person in my household. And what if I can't get to the supermarket? In listening to me, you should be able to say, okay, I'm checking off my list. I have dry goods, I have rice, I have flour to make my big sankako tea, I have pasta, I have my canned goods. For my baby, I have formula, I have my diapers and so on and so forth. Oh, and don't forget your comfort foods or your stress foods. So you really want a packet of, I mean, I don't usually advocate for these things, but when you're stressed, you want a snack. So you buy a few packets of chips, something to just keep you calm and know you can do a little bit of comfort eating for this period because it's necessary. We may take it for granted, but it's actually necessary. What if I get a cut or a bruise and I can't get to the health center? Do I have my grab and go bag? Do I have my first aid kit? What are the contents of my first kit kit? Do I have my aspirin, my alcalado, my lime call, my Vicks Vapor Rub? Because we know these things are essential for every Caribbean home. What about the pharmacy? It's closed and I'm having an asthma attack because it's cold outside. Do I have an extra nebulizer? Do I have my asthmatic drugs? I have a psychiatric patient in my home. Do I have all the meds they need? Because the normal person gets scared when they hear thunder and lightning. So you can well imagine what it would do to a mentally challenged person. Do I have my high blood pressure medication? Do I have my diabetes medication? What if the internet gets cut off and I can't access Facebook and Instagram? Parents, brace yourselves. Then I need to pull out all my board games, the scrabbles that under the thing taking dust, teach the kids to play Uno, get the books out and read with them. It's a family bonding time. And what if my home gets damaged? Are my documents secure? Do I know where my passport is? Have I gone to the ATM and gotten some cash? Do I know where the deeds for my house is? The will that says that the land my grandfather sent um, left for me is actually mine. So those things are important. And we have been saying it time and time again. So no, these were just reminders. These are the questions you should be asking yourself and checking them off to make sure that you have them. A few other reminders for us. COVID-19 re COVID remains a real threat to us. And I'm sure that none of us want to go back to the lockdowns of 2022. And I sure don't want to go back to the stadium for hundreds of testing a day. The shelters are an open space which does not afford us the luxury of six feet social distancing. So please, if you are going to the shelters, protect yourself and your family by wearing your masks and doing the hand hygiene and sanitation steps that we all know so well. No one will be denied entry without a mask. However, we strongly advise that masks to be worn and we protect each other. The children, the elderly, 
the hearing impaired, the visually impaired, the mentally impaired in our homes need to understand what is going on and why the heightened state of anxiousness within the home. So please, take a few moments to explain what is going on in an effort to avoid anxiety and the unwillingness to follow instructions when they are given. Again, please be assured that the seven health districts have done all to prepare for this hurricane season and that our local doctors and nurses stand ready to assist you, our most precious asset. I always say, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. So please, Dominica, stay safe. Well, thanks to the acting director of primary health care, uh, Dr. Drago, thank you for your very practical and specific approach to presenting the information. Of course, in any disaster, national security is a key consideration, and we have with us the Deputy Chief of Police, Lincoln Corbett, to address us. Good morning. That me recognize the presence of the Honorable Prime Minister, Rosa Skerritt, the Minister of National Security, Raven Blackmore, other government dignitaries, my fellow presenters, good morning again. The police force is ready and prepared as far as practicable to provide the relevant security and safety support as it relates to Tropical Storm Brett. We have activated our major disaster, disaster plan. Whenever a tropical storm or hurricane is expected to impact Dominica, the force is mandated to take all reasonable means to protect life and property and to ensure that the public peace is preserved. In support of, the, in support of these objectives, all off-duty officers and special constables have been recalled to duty. We are also working in close collaboration with other public and private sector organizations with a view to recognizing the aforementioned objectives. You will therefore see an increased presence of police officers performing patrol and security duties throughout the state so as to ensure that the public peace is preserved. While the force will do all to preserve the, the public peace, business owners are reminded to take the measures deemed necessary to protect the investment and be on the alert for, to prevent theft and vandalism. The police will the cooperation all at this time. Thank you. Thank you to Mr. Corbett. We also have with us the Honorable Reuben Blackmore, the Minister for National Security and Legal Affairs. And I now invite Honorable Blackmore to share with us a few comments. Thank you, um, Press Secretary. Uh, the Prime Minister has spoken so I have actually covered every salient point in terms of our preparedness and response mechanisms that we have in place. Let me also recognize again our Prime Minister who have been leading from the front. <coughs> and, uh, and I want to also recognize the Secretary to the Cabinet, uh, great public servant, and of course the Permanent Secretary in the Prime Minister's office. I, I, I'm not sure if they are slept yet. And of course the Press Secretary the heads of uh, the subcommittees who are presented here this morning, and quite eloquently, good morning to all. As we heard from our Prime Minister, and quite rightly so, that our level of preparedness um, is much improved this year as opposed to last year. And I just want to quickly uh, make reference to what we have been able to do. Firstly, in the area of shelter, our capacity in terms of our uh, shelter and capacity have been significantly improved because of the original shelters that we have built and the housing programs that we have embarked on over the years, we have a capacity of 7,960 as opposed to 3,570 people requiring shelters. We have been able to decentralize our storage capacity. We have built um, purpose, purposefully um, storage um, centers and emergency management um, centers in Casabros, in Cotton Hill. And it just goes on. We have been able to improve on our telecommunication infrastructure um, because you know the issue of redundancy after the conventional communication network is shut off. 
because of a storm, the issue of telecommunication sets, we have over 400. People have been trained at the community levels, and those sets have been deployed to the people who have been so trained. I want to also say that, and it speaks to our preparedness and our readiness, for the first time since our, since our independence as a nation, we have been able to do our own forecasting, and we will be able to actually issue our own advisories. So our warning, our watches, are actually done by ourselves because of the significant improvement we have made over the years in our med services, and I think that is, speaks to the leadership we have been getting from the Prime Minister and this government. And so the rest is for us as community, as families, to respond appropriately. I also want to say that we have in storage over 40 satellite phones, which will be deployed to key personnel in the health um, and department, and the police, and the community leaders in the village councils, etc., and fire, if needs be. I just finally want to reiterate that, just to add to what the deputy police chief has said, there will be no tolerance for lawlessness. I've been following the social media, and I've been seeing some people talking about looting. Let me warn you. Uh, no looting will be tolerated. And that is not a threat, it's a warning. I also want to take this opportunity to commend the authorities in St. Vincent and um, uh, the Prime Minister of St. Vincent who have made available to us a thousand cuts. And those cuts will be deployed in the various regional shelters on the communities that are, that, are, that are actually vulnerable. I want to commend Mr. Fixtroy, and who have already begun de um, deploying those cuts in the, uh, in the appropriate district. So let us do what we have to do as a, as a society and to, to respond and to prepare ourselves. And finally, final, um, just to add to what the local government commission has said, it has been brought to our attention that some people may not want to cooperate with the officials on the whole issue of the need when the call is made um, by the Prime Minister to move to the respective shelters. We are calling on you again, please. Um, we have done everything as a government to put systems in place. But the effectiveness of our response also resides on our response from the community level. And especially in the vulnerable communities that may have to move, especially in the east, that once the call is given, please move to the shelters that have been built for you and to secure you. I thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Minister. And at this point, I would like to re-invite the Honorable Prime Minister to deliver some additional remarks. We'll take questions from the very press, right, in the, in the next 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, Again, just to reiterate, we are under tropical storm warning. Okay, um, this has been activated from last night. We and, and therefore, we all have to be in a state of uh, preparedness and, and readiness, uh, and, and to use the next um, couple of hours to to finalize our arrangements. There are questions about um, when the shelters will be um, um, will be activated. Uh, this will be done um, by by midday today. Of course, um, the the uh, authorities will um, indicate the shelters. Who I suspect will be do it by by localities, um, taking the more the most vulnerable first, um, so that um, that will provide you that information uh, within the next hour in terms of the shelters that will be activated by midday. The the other question with regards to. Um, um, Contacts, of course, the Ministry of Health has, has contacts for their own emergencies at the district level. Um, we provide you with the numbers of the shelter managers in the various um, communities. Um, of course, we have the ODM um, um, numbers, which can be called. Um, this will be provided um, via um, the various um, um, medium uh, so that everybody has access to, to those numbers. The, there's also a question about um, the community of Bataka in the Kalago Territory. Obviously, there was some challenge in getting the appropriate um, facility. So um, residents of Bataka would be transported to the Salibre Primary School, um, so that the Salibre Primary School um, they, will, they will utilize. Um, again, there is no um, forced 
movement by people on the law. Um, there's nothing in the law that forces the, the officials to, to cause you to move to a shelter. What we have done as part of our responsibility as a government is to ensure that every community has access to a shelter as far as practicable. We've also been working over the years with private homeowners who have facilitated and, uh, and been allowing their homes to be used as shelters. Uh, as you recognize, the, 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 the approach of the government is to construct um, independent facilities. And so we started with Layu, we have in, in Cassie Bruce, we have in Jimit, eventually we'll have one in Marigot, we'll have one in Portsmouth, we'll have one in, in, in Granby, um, and in the Roseau um, areas, with the, with the intention being to move away from using schools um, as, as, as hurricane shelters, so that we, in the event we are affected, a storm comes, we can start back school um, um, very quickly, because those schools will not be utilized um, for those facilities. And, and that effort will continue building what they call regional um, hurricane shelters. And in communities where we have um, community resource centers, those are being outfitted as well to provide um, shelter for, for those of us who are, needed, who are in need of it. So uh, evacuation or asking to move to a shelter is a voluntary exercise. But it is in your personal interest to recognize that you are vulnerable and you are at risk and that your life is in danger. Your life, the lives of your children and family are in danger. And therefore, the sensible thing to do is to move to a shelter. Okay? If you have family and friends who can house you, that's even better. But there are shelters. Please move. Let's cooperate. Let's collaborate. Um, let us work together. Uh, please. please. Media, please. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Oh, you, you feel like you come here? You? No, no, I don't. Yeah, Prime Minister, my question, Curtis Matt from DBS. My question is about the airport, Douglas Charles Airport. Um, any arrangements for closure or anything like that? Yeah. Not good much about the airport. Okay, well, all of the ports um, will remain open. Um, the the um, seaports and the airports and at the appropriate time we will, we will make a determination on, on their closure um, but um, they, they'll remain open um, certainly up until 12 like everywhere else um, and then at, at, at 12 we'll make a determination um, on, the, on the on the closure of, of, the, of the airport and the ports but a decision taken last night that both public and private sector entities um, should allow their staff to go home and to prepare for this eventuality. And of course, um, certainly before midday, we will make a definitive um, decision on the on the airport and on the seaport. Can I remember this day, Prime Minister? Prime Minister, we've not heard much about the prison services you know, around that time. That is when people think about the loved ones at the prison, and people probably use that opportunity to escape, etc. Yeah. What plans are in place? to ensure that those of their are also safe? Well, that's a question to the, to, to the folks, but that's to say to you that um, um, if you have a loved one at the prison, you should worry about the loved one. The loved one will be safe. Yeah. If you have a loved one at the, at the hospital, the loved one will be safe um, and, and properly taken care of. They have enough food to eat. Um, the, 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 the place is secure. It's not, it's not leaking or anything. Um, we have made improvements to the prison over the years in, in a... In a incremental uh, manner, um, and, and so they'll be okay. Um, I would, as the Minister of National Security said, I would caution people against attempting any illegal activities during that time. Um, those will not be tolerated. Um, every police officer who is on leave um, will be recalled, and, and so the police will have its full complement at its disposal um, to, to provide security um, to the state. We have, we've learned lessons from the past, and the police have factored this into the into the plan, and, and I think we're in a much better position than we've been in the past, and so forth. So, um, and all of us need to pro we need to be part of the security apparatus, and so on. not only the police. We all need to play our part. Um, but I would not I would caution anyone from attempting to try anything um, during this time, not even at sea. Um, you know, all of the sports be manned properly, 
um, and, and so forth. So don't, the police are not going to be sleeping. Okay. But folks, please, we're under tropical storm warning. Um, we're not under hurricane watch or warning yet. But as we saw with Hurricane Maria, we moved from a, uh, from a category one to a category five in half an hour. In half an hour. In half an hour. So you can move from a tropical storm warning to a hurricane in 5, 10, 15, 20, half, a, half, half an hour. So let us not wait for it to get to a point where we, we have no time. We have some time, and we thank the Lord for giving us technology to, 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 to track these things and to advise us where we are. So let us take the opportunity now to plan and to do all last checking. Please manage your anxiety. There's no time to be, no, we, we do, we, 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 there'll always be anxiety, but we have to manage it. Okay? Let's manage it, let's remain calm. The best way to do, to do it is to have a checklist, and then you go for your checklist. If you don't have a checklist, then it's difficult for you to, for you to cross check to see what you have and what you don't have yet. Okay, so elderly, get your little grandchild to write the checklist of what you need and, and cross check. Get your little flashlight and, and the various items that we've been told about and so forth. And those of us who may have a little more than others, you know, if you have three packs of of, of crackers, biscuit, I mean, a person could do it with, with, with one as well. So because a person may not have any of those. Um, so let us be our neighbor's keeper. Um, you know, there's always unity in this country um, leading up to a natural disaster. And immediately after natural disaster, I know after everybody back in their homes and so on, we forget about unity. But at least during this period, um, there, there's unity and so forth. I want to thank all of you um, for your kind service and attention. Um, we're in this together, and we'll, over we'll, we'll ride this storm together. Um, we keep on praying. We, everybody's praying hard. Um, even people who, who never cost my prayer are praying now, um, so that so that we do not uh, get affected by the storm. Um, so let us let us let, let us pray for for calm. Um, let us pray that the that the storm will die out, um, not only here in, for Dominica, but throughout the Caribbean. Thank you very much. Our well, thanks to the honourable prime minister, and thank you for tuning in. Do stay tuned via official channels for updates as the day progresses. Good morning, everyone. Thank you.